Today I'd like to make you familiar with a browser extension that I haven't really dedicated to enough time on my channel and that's because there is this star tangled disclaimer for advanced users which probably makes all the normal people on the internet think they'd have to have a degree from computer science and watch Matrix movies with tinfoil hats. You don't have to be a nerd to understand the Umetrix. Umetrix was made so that it's easier to control what your browser executes and downloads on your device. You'll learn how to use Umetrix to protect your privacy and browse the web more securely. Umetrix is technically pronounced as Micrometrix, same as Microblock Origin. But Umetrix sounds more practical since that's how you're going to search for it on your browser. And that's what I'm going to stick to in this video. Umetrix is a point and click web content blocker. On this channel we mostly talk about protecting your privacy, which is how we are going to use this tool. But Umetrix is also an extremely effective firewall that will stop a lot of malware, trackers and malicious code from making their way into your device. And because it blocks all unnecessary bloatware on websites, it will also save you significant amounts of bandwidth consumption. Umetrix puts up stronger protection than your antivirus because it's capable of blocking way beyond the reach of your antivirus. With this browser add-on, everything will be safer. Your internet banking, signing into your online accounts, web browser-based communication like on Facebook website or webmail service, and all of the general browsing will become much more secure. Umetrix was built so that third-party websites can't snoop on your private information they shouldn't have access to in the first place. Web developers can't be trusted with their security and oftentimes even they don't know how much they expose and leak your private data. And that goes for the big sites like Google and Facebook as well. Let's take control of our online privacy and security. After you downloaded and installed Umetrix from your browser extension repository, the first step is to understand what it does. What's great about this add-on is that you don't have to understand everything. You can be as novice or as advanced with it as you want to be. So first we are going to look at the interface, then we'll interact with it a little bit, we'll go over some settings and then I'll show you some tips and tricks that you may want to use. Let's start with explaining the user interface of Umetrix add-on. Basically the, the colors are telling everything, the numbers just have informative values. Everything that's green is allowed and everything that's red is blocked. If it's dark green it's whitelisted, if it's dark red it's blacklisted and everything in between just inherits rules from its preceding rule set. This blue rectangle in the top left corner suggests the scope, by default it's going to be domain level scope. If it's pale blue, it's side level scope, that's the lowest scope on Umetrix. And then if it's black, it's global scope. This is important to understand these scopes, because if you change anything on the matrix, it's going to affect it differently depending on what scope you're on. So if you are on this global scope and you block a domain, let's say... Okay, let's say we block uh, Adobe and then we hit the padlock, it's going to save it for all websites everywhere across the web. Every website that has adobedtm.com on it will have that domain blocked. To reverse it, just click it again, hit the padlock. If you want to maybe play around with allowing and blocking stuff and maybe you allow something that you didn't want to allow and you block something that you didn't want to block, no worries, just click the reverse temporary changes and it's going to be back to normal. Reload the page icon is really useful to see um, changes in real time. And that's pretty much all you need to know. You don't have to worry about this top row over here, which is types of requests. So websites can make requests by cookies, CSS, images, media, scripts, XHR, iframes and others. As a novice user, you are mostly going to focus on hostname requests. And these are all here on the top left column. What Umetrix does with this level of blocking is that it's probably going to allow you to read the website, but maybe you won't be able to see some images. As you can see here, we can see probably all of the website content. But if we went to the video section, we don't see any video playable here. And if we click on anything, it doesn't actually load. So this is how Umetrix is going to affect or break the website. To fix that, we are going to look at different ways how we can block and allow content on websites using Umetrix. 
What's really great about Geometrix user interface is that you can go to the behind the scenes and really change the rule sets and play around with its code and rules to make it work exactly like you want. So to access these settings, just click on the Geometrix icon and click on this grey bar that says Geometrix. On the first step you are going to see some general settings. It's going to be appearance, if you are colorblind, you can turn on their colorblind friendly mode, which is going to change most of the colors to blue and yellow. You can change the size of the text from normal to large, this is how large looks. And what I like to do is to have my Geometrix to show the number of distinct requests on the icon. This is what it looks like, so now we can see there is actually 50 requests made by ArsTechnica.com. You can go to the privacy tab and I suggest that we harden the Geometrix for better privacy even more. You can set Geometrix to delete blocked cookies delete non-blocked session cookies after 60 minutes, delete local storage content set by blocked host names, clear browse cache every 60 minutes. Browser cache is really how websites try to track you without letting you know. So clearing browser cache is really something useful and Geometrix can do it for you automatically. Spoof HTTP refer string of third-party requests, strict HTTPS forbidden mixed content, this means that if a website that uses HTTPS, which is encrypted and secure version, has some content that's not encrypted, Geometrix is going to block that content. Block all hyperlink auditing attempts. Hyperlink auditing looks like a really short version of a link that you click on and then it's going to show you a longer version of a link. And all that this hyperlink auditing is doing is just to track you. There is no real use for the general user. It's really just to track you across websites. Spoof your user agent string. Your browser has a fingerprint based on your current browser configuration, version and everything that you have installed on your browser. Check this box and your browser is going to look like generic browser that most people have. The My Rules tab is really useful if you just want to type in specific rules for specific websites. Here you can type in your own specific rules and we are going to talk about these but you can research them on your own if you want to block Twitter or Facebook everywhere except for when you specifically use Twitter or Facebook to sign in. Post files, uh, I suggest that you update these regularly. You can also choose auto update host files. This is basically lists that um, people maintain to make it easy for Umetrix to block certain websites or certain domains more specifically based on maybe their advertisement or tracking mechanisms or maybe they are just malware. Uh, so Umetrix will protect you from a lot of bad stuff that's happening on the internet. In the About tab, you can back up your settings and restore from backup. Let's say there is a website that you visit really often and you don't want the website to be broken each time you visit it. So let's go to arstechnica.com, let's look at what we can do to allow more content to load for this website. The easiest thing you can do is to be on the domain scope, arstechnica.com and you can click all to allow all the bloatware to load with the Ars Technica domain. You can click reload to see what happens and you can see that there is a bunch of stuff that came loaded after you allowed it. Some of it is necessary for all the web content to load but some of it is just advertisements and tracking. From my experience you can also block Adobe DTM.com because I don't think that Adobe is necessary here. Adobe is really just a data broker here. If you are satisfied with how the website looks, you can click the save te all temporary changes for this scope. And remember, we are in the blue scope, dark blue scope, which is domain scope. So this configuration is only going to affect arxtechnica.com and not the global scope, not every other website that you visit. So you can easily click save all temporary changes to have this configuration saved each time you visit Ars Technica. You can now view the whole page no problem, you can even view videos if we go to the video tab. And we can easily play videos on arstechnica.com. To revert the changes, just click the bottom rectangle of the all cell to make it red again. Reload the page to see what happens. And as you can see, we are no longer available to watch the video, but you are still able to read articles. The article loads with full text and images. But then again, some functionality of the website might not work. For example, if you want to read comments, this is not going to load. You will need to know what to allow. I know that it's going to be arstechnica.net. I can reload the page and the comments loaded as well. If you don't know what it is, you can always hit the old cell and just reload the page like that. 
Every time you just want to save the temporary changes to make them permanent, you hit the same padlock. If you broke the site and you blocked some stuff that you didn't want to block and allowed some stuff that you wanted to block, just hit the erase button over here, revert temporary changes for this scope. So by default, Umetrix is going to be in block all allow exceptionally mode. That means that for each website that you visit often, you are going to have to go through the configuration again. If you don't want to do that and you'd rather have the website to load with everything and then you would like to selectively block trackers and other domains that you don't like, you can do that as well with a single click. Go to Umetrix add-on, go to the global scope and click the all cell to make it green and click the padlock to save all temporary changes for the scope. And because it's black, it suggests it's a global scope. So everything that you save in the global scope is going to affect the behavior of the whole Umetrix add-on, which means that all the other websites, even the ones that you are not visiting right now, but you will visit later, will be subject to the global scope rules. So click save if you want that and hit reload. And now each website will have to follow the same global scope rules. For some websites, Symmetrix may look quite messy. To fix that, you can click this arrow in the middle of the matrix to hide all blacklisted domains to make it look cleaner. Once you're in the allow all block exceptionally mode, you can block certain domains that you don't want to follow you around. For example, you may want to block Facebook. So just click facebook.net. If you hit the padlock icon here, facebook.net will be blocked on all websites across the internet. If you go to facebook.com, Facebook will become blur because we are visiting Facebook directly, but everywhere else Facebook will be blocked. Without wasting too much of your time here, there are a lot of great rules that you can apply to your Umetrix My Rules and make your web experience much more enjoyable. If you want to allow Facebook only on Facebook and blocked everywhere else, you can just copy this rule set section, go to temporary rules, hit edit. Copy that into new line, click save, and then commit. You can do the same with other favorite websites that you want to use like Twitch or YouTube. There are common examples for making YouTube work on uh, non-YouTube websites through YouTube Now Cookie. You can copy that, click edit, new line, and you can put as many rules as you want in here. You can find good sources on the internet if you want. I will provide some sources in the description below. I hope this tutorial on how to use Umetrix to protect your privacy was helpful. Let me know in the comments what you think and feel free to ask your questions about Umetrix. I'll try to answer all of them. Please engage in liking and commenting as it helps my video to rank higher and get discovered by wider audience. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe for more videos about privacy, digital rights, corporations and more. Thanks for watching.